It's here, the hotly anticipated SS Pro Series 2 Jayhawk in all its glory. Look at that. It's here and I built it. Now I know what some of you are thinking, I don't care, shut up, I just wanna buy one. You can do that, that's perfectly fine. Go to SSRockets.com, but do keep in mind if you use my discount code ZWW10, you can get 10% off of this. You'll be helping me, you'll be helping Estes, you'll be helping yourself. It's a win-win-win for everybody. So please, ZWW10, go get yourself a Jayhawk if you don't want to wait. But if you wanna see how this beautiful scale kit comes together, stick around, we're gonna unbox it and build it. As you'd expect with an SS kit, the Pro Series 2 Jayhawk is very complete. It comes with Aramid cord, <coughs> Kevlar. It comes with a nylon parachute, 29 millimeter motor retainer. Yes, it is 29 millimeter motor mount. For those curious who had the original Pro Series Jayhawk that was 24 millimeter, they bumped that up and I'm super excited about it. It comes with nice vacuum form parts and it even gives you the option between launch lugs and rail buttons, although I recommend rail buttons and the awesome Estes rail launcher system, which I did a video about as well. If you wanna go check that out after this one, be my guest. It's a really cool launch pad. It also comes with a little cardboard cradle just to keep the weight off of the wings of the rocket, which is pretty cool. You'll see it later in the video. Now let's talk about building it. Though SS marks it as an expert skill level kit, it's really similar in a lot of ways to building any other rocket kit. Starting with the motor mount assembly, the only standout things compared to any other motor mount are really the fact that it goes into a tail cone, so you have one smaller centering ring on the back, and the fact that you have to cut the flashing off the tail cone with an X-Acto knife or razor knife to open up the fin slots for the wings to pass through later. Be careful with this step. Uh, I've had some bad run-ins with really sharp X-Acto knife blades in the past. That is why this finger looks like this, so. Cut away from yourself and away from your hand. Obviously one of the more unique bits of this kit are the wings and they go together kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. And if you follow the instructions completely, you'll find yourself taping off the edges and hand sanding some bevels into them, which can sound a little daunting, but it's really not that bad. It just requires a little bit of finesse because balsa is very, very soft and easy to warp. One of the key steps here is ensuring that the wings stay flat and straight while the glue is drying and you'll wanna do that by weighing them down with the industry standard. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you, the educated viewer, what the industry standard for weighing down rocket components is, but for those not in the know, yes, it is indeed a case of Icon snap ring pliers and a copy of Dr. Terry McCurry's experimental composite propellant, the second edition, obviously. Once you've got the whole wing assembly dried and together, it really starts to finally take that iconic Jayhawk shape. There's a step where you put the wings in through the tail cone and you use that to reference where you're putting the top centering ring. And that was kind of the first like, whoa, look at it, it's a Jayhawk moment for me. I was pretty excited about that. From there, it's pretty much business as usual with any other rocket kit. You use the included tube marking guides to mark your tubes, make sure you use something straight. I think my door frame was a little bit wobbly. So, uh, my lines were a little bit wobbly. Unlike most kits, this thing does have a few different spots because you're aligning so many things. There's a line for each side of the tunnel and each side of the antennas, antennae, that go near the top and a marking for the pitot tube as well as obviously the uh, launch lugs or rail buttons, whichever you go with. From there though, it's pretty much just like gluing in any other motor mount and gluing through the wall fins. It's pretty straightforward, except for the fins are giant wings with winglets instead of fins. There you go. I wanted to quickly talk about the nose weight on this rocket. It is a ton. You can see in the beginning when I opened the video, there's a ton of clay. Looks like a ton of clay for nose weight there. And it does all go in the nose, every last bit of it. You roll it up in tiny little worms, stick it through the end of the nose cone, and then you tamp it down. I found that the best thing I had kicking around to do that was quarter 20 alt thread, but you probably have something better than that laying around. Your mileage may vary, but it does work. So if you have quarter 20 alt thread, there you go, use that. As is the case with a lot of Estes kits, all I really needed for fillets was a little bit of wood glue. Uh, I taped them off because I am good at making giant messes when I just pull them with my finger. You can obviously use epoxy or CA if you want, but uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. From here, I pulled back a little bit on the filming aspect of the build and just kind of uh, built the rocket. 
I did a live stream where I for sure did not butcher the cuts on the conduit tunnel that goes on the side of the rocket, and I definitely, definitely did not break it live on camera either. Oh, came off. I also put the antennas on during that live stream, and uh, from there it was just a simple matter of filling and sanding and painting and while balsa sanding sealer is a really good idea on any s's kit i found that the rust-oleum filler primer does a really good job of filling wood grain so i just did two quick coats of that hit all the low spots and little problem areas with uh some bondo spot putty and glazing putty i like that stuff a lot because it's one component so you just put it on let it dry for like six hours and then it sands really smooth sanded everything back with 400 grit sandpaper and in the process managed to break two of the antennas off um i'm a high power guy i don't really have the finesse for fragile stuff like balsa and very small pieces of plastic i'm used to the rockets i'm sanding be able to be thrown off the table so Give me a bit of grace here, okay? I didn't want to record any of this because quite frankly, there is more than enough footage of me sanding on this YouTube channel. And if you really want to go check some sanding out, I highly recommend my Bowmark build video because that rocket came with just square pieces of balsa that I had to sand into the right shape. So if you really just are down with watching a dude sand in his garage while he sweats his life away because it's 90 degrees in there, the Bomar video is great for you. Go check it out. I secretly like sanding. I just have to be in the right mood for it. There's something very tranquil about it, especially when I get to set up the video like this. I just kind of let it roll and then do a voiceover because I just got podcast blasting, got the respirator on. After sanding, I gave it that iconic coat of orange paint. And after that dried, it was on to decals. I spent two hours. Yes, I'm not kidding two hours putting the decals on this rocket and i just finished that about 45 minutes ago as i'm recording this it legitimately took me two hours yes i have not used water slide decals in probably over a decade i like them a lot more than i remember from being a child if i'm honest but everything came out pretty good i ruined some of them but that's to be expected i ruin a little bit of everything i touch it's a little quirk of mine. I'm sure way more experienced modelers will not take anywhere near two hours to get this stuff done, but in the end, I think it came out looking pretty good. And that brings us to right here. Here it is once again, folks, the SS Pro Series 2 Jayhawk. It's so, so cool. Um, I really want to put some composite motors in this thing. With the balsa on there, I don't know how fast it's going to want to go, but some part of me says that it needs an H motor. So maybe an H97. I've got some G53s. Maybe I'll put a G53 in there. We'll see how it takes a G53. And then if all systems seem okay from there, maybe we'll put an H in it. I'm kind of concerned that it doesn't have enough nose weight for composite motors, but I don't really have a good point of reference for that. So hopefully we can get together a decent simulation file and figure that out from there. I really, really wanted to fly it for this video, but it's been super windy around me. And uh, I live really close to the Lucerne dry lake bed, which is where I would have gone to fly it, but it's also been super windy out there. So I didn't get a chance to fly this thing yet, unfortunately, but I will fly it as soon as possible. And there will of course be video of it one way or another. Now, if you wanna see behind the scenes stuff and get access to uh, say early SS releases like this, and I will say this isn't the only cool SS kit that I will be getting an advanced look at. And SS is usually kind enough to let me share it with my Patreon supporters and my channel members. So if you want inside looks at SS stuff and all the cool high power, mid power and low power rocket stuff I'm doing, go to patreon.com slash rocket vlogs. Thank you very much, of course, to my Patreon supporters whose names are rolling across the screen right now, or you can press the join button right below this video to become a channel member for as little as $1.99 a month. Patreon is as cheap as a dollar a month. You also get full launch videos without ads, as well as advanced episodes and ad-free episodes of the Anti-Gravity Group podcast. If you care to listen to my podcast, you can do that. I know you're probably ready to leave, but please don't. This last one's important. It, one of the awesome food vendors that comes out to Argonia, Kansas for Cloudbusters High Power Rocket launches, Ken and Barbie's Rollin' Grill, I think is the full name. I just know it as Ken and Barbie's. It's a food truck. It just burned down. There's a GoFundMe. So if you can give anything, please do. Um, the GoFundMe link will be in the description. Their goal is $25,000. And last time I checked, it was at like 6,500. It's been an overwhelming amount of support from the rocketry community, which is very awesome to see. But I figured I would do a little plug here as well. Yes, I also donated 
Um, but link will be in the description. Please go check that out. All said and done, folks. There it is. The SS Pro Series 2 Jayhawk. Don't forget, you can use my discount code ZWW10 for 10% off this and anything else you order from SSRockets.com. My name is Braden Carlson. That is B-R-A-D-E-N, Braden, not Brandon. <laughs> Am I being too aggressive? You can follow me on Instagram at BigB1011 and go check out the new Rocket Vlogs Facebook page where I'm posting a lot of fun updates and stuff like that. Go get yourself a Jayhawk. Go build yourself a Jayhawk and go fly a rocket. I'll see you next time.